streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at noon. Good afternoon and thanks for watching News 8 Now. I'm Amy DuPont. Police continue to identify work to identify the human remains found Sunday by two people picking up trash along Highway 53 and on Alaska. Officials say the remains have been in that spot for a while. Additional state agencies are assisting with the investigation, including the Wisconsin State Patrol, the Department of Justice's Crime Scene Response Team, and the La Crosse County Medical Examiner's Office. Officials say it may take several weeks or longer to identify the remains. Investigators say there is no danger to the public. Well, good Monday to you. We saw a few peaks of sunshine this morning, but the clouds have taken over. And don't be surprised if you see a raindrop or two. As we take a look at the satellite and radar imagery, we had some steadier rain move through the Chippewa Valley earlier this morning. Now we're just seeing mainly cloudy skies and maybe an isolated shower or sprinkles. We take a live look on CityCam. Yeah, kind of a gloomy afternoon. However, despite the clouds, temperatures are warming up very nicely. 58 degrees already in La Crosse. You're at 55 in Sparta. You're at 61 already in Prairie du Chien and low 60s in Boscobel. Now the winds, they're a, a bit breezy out of the south and southeast. So something you got to keep in mind if you do want to get outdoors this afternoon. Uh, those winds sustained anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, but wind gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour possible this afternoon. So could see an isolated shower. Temperatures will gradually warm into the upper 60s. I think some of our southern communities could hit 70 degrees today. But again, we are going to see more clouds than sun sun with an isolated shower possible. Now it gets even warmer tomorrow before a cold front moves through, bringing a cool down and some rainfall. I'll have more details on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Michelle. Some cities and states are finding it harder and harder to administer coronavirus vaccines as the number of people who want to get those vaccines already did, leaving those who are reluctant only to get their shots. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. Vaccine hesitancy is becoming the latest coronavirus challenge as supply is outpacing demand in some communities. We don't need to have every American vaccinated, but we do need to have most. And I hope uh, I hope most Americans decide this is really a safe and effective vaccine that is good for them and it's good for their families. A new CBS News poll shows more than one in five Americans or around 22 percent say they will not get the vaccine. Another 18 percent are still unsure. About half of Republicans surveyed say they are either unsure or will not get the shot. I encourage people to talk to their doctors, talk to people you trust, talk to your pharmacists. Don't listen to politicians, don't listen to senators, don't listen to me. Talk to the people in your life who you trust. Overall, the majority of Americans say they will get vaccinated or have already received at least one dose. Doctors say it's important not to skip the second dose of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. It is critical that everybody get their second shot because uh, that's the only way we know that it's going to really protect you for any extended period of time. More states are expected to resume using the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine this week, but with added warnings after rare cases of blood clots. The CDC is also expected to announce new guidance in the coming days about wearing masks outdoors. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. One European Union official says they expect fully vaccinated Americans will be allowed to travel to Europe again beginning at some point this summer. The EU has been closed for non-essential travel to Europe for Americans for more than a year. Well, the CDC is updating its guidance for summer camps. Under the new recommendations, camps can open as long as multiple prevention strategies are in place. That includes the use of masks, physical distancing of three feet between campers and six feet between campers and staff. The guidelines say camp activities should be held outside when possible. The CDC is encourage, encouraging everyone eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine to get it. The overdose numbers continue to rise. According to the CDC, more than 87,000 Americans died of a drug overdose in the one year period ending in September of 2020. In Minnesota, overdoses rose 32% during that same time, many caused by opioids. If you look back in the early mid to 1990s, when we first started seeing this rise in opioids, um, the actual epidemic has been increasing every single year since then. It slowed down a little bit, like Dr. Gazalpa was talking about, but it hasn't stopped and it's continued to increase. 
In addition to opioids, op opioids, Minnesota has also seen an increase in drug overdose due to meth, as well as an increase in deaths due to alcohol. The first results from the 2020 census will be released in just a couple of hours. Today's information will focus on state population counts, which are used to determine the seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. Other data from the once decade count, once a decade count, will show the sizes of communities which could determine funding eligibility. We're going to have more tonight during News 8 Now at 5. Supporters of Jacob Blake are calling for the firing of the officer who shot him. Those supporters held a rally in March in Kenosha Sunday. Officer Rustin Shevsky was not charged in that 2020 shooting that left Blake paralyzed from the waist down. Kenosha police announced earlier this month that Shevsky had returned from administrative leave. Happening today, the City of La Crosse brush pickup. Brush, including branches and tree limbs, must be less than four feet, bundled with cotton twine, and not weigh more than 50 pounds. Pickup continues through Friday. And a bridge repair project is underway in Winona. Traffic flow on County Road 17 near Minnesota State College Southeast will be reduced to one lane at, um, on the bridge at a time and limited to one lane in each direction. The construction is expected to last through the week. Well, there's a new look at CBD oil's role in decreasing pain. Details on that story and more later in Medical News. Production of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine gets a boost from overseas and a day to savor the snack worth getting tied up with. You hear our today's stories in our Money Watch. U.S.-based Moderna will be getting some help from the French later this year. Drug maker Sanofi says it has inked a deal to help produce as many as 200 million doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine beginning in the fall. The production would be based in the U.S. and help boost supply through April of next year. A green light for some Americans. According to the New York Times, the European Union will allow fully vaccinated Americans to travel to Europe this summer. Officials have not given a specific timeline, but the European Commission is expected to recommend a policy change that would allow resumed travel. Honda wants to go green. The Japanese automaker announced plans to phase out all gasoline powered vehicles in North America by 2040. It's the latest major automaker with a goal of becoming carbon neutral. The company CEO expects that 40% of its North American vehicle sales will be battery or fuel cell powered by the end of the decade. And don't get it twisted, but today is National Pretzel Day. To toast the unofficial holiday, Auntie Anne's is giving away a free original or cinnamon sugar pretzel today if you sign up for their Pretzel Perks app. Wendy's is also beefing up its celebration. App users who buy a Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger can get a second one for $1 starting today. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane Kinghall. There really is a day for everything. As we head to break, here's a live look at the New York Stock Exchange. Stay with us. Medical News is next. What your foot says about your heart and a new look at the pain relieving effects of CBD. Elise Preston has some of today's top health stories. Researchers at Syracuse University compared pain relief from pure CBD oil to the so-called placebo effect. They found patients experience improvement in pain using cannabidiol, and they also felt psychological effects simply from expecting they had gotten CBD. Researchers in Boston found that while mother-to-newborn COVID infection rates are low, babies can suffer indirect adverse risks, especially if a baby needs to be born preterm because the mother is sick. The study also found newborns of socially vulnerable mothers were at an increased risk for coronavirus infection. And the way to your heart may be through your feet. Research presented at the European Society of Cardiology found a simple foot test can detect heart rhythm disorders in patients with diabetes. Doctors say the quick, low-cost intervention can help prevent strokes. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Thanks, Elise. Here's a live look through City Cam 8. Cloudy today. We'll find out if it's going to rain. Michelle's in next.
welcome back to you on this Monday afternoon. We saw a few peaks of sunshine this morning, but the clouds are winning over and we might see an isolated shower or two. Now, if we take a look at the satellite and radar imagery, we saw more steady rainfall in the Chippewa Valley this morning, even parts of Trempeau and Jackson County. You got a few of those showers as well. Right now, we just have mostly cloudy skies, maybe a sprinkle or an isolated shower. There's a warm front north of us, so that's where the majority of the precipitation is staying. However, I can't rule out a few raindrops in our region. We've got kind of a gloomy look over downtown La Crosse, but despite the clouds, thanks to a southeast breeze, temperatures are warming fairly nicely. 58 degrees in La Crosse. The airport is reporting sunshine, but as you can see on CityCam, we do have plenty of clouds. East-southeast wind at 13 miles an hour, so it's breezy, and the Mississippi River is at 7.27 feet and falling. We're at 58 in Sparta, 54 in Black River Falls in Winona. Here at 58 in Viroqua, and we've got some low 60s in Decorah, Prairie du Chien and in Boscobel. But as I mentioned, those winds, they're out of the south southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour sustained. Could see wind gusts up to about 25 miles per hour later this afternoon. But that is what's going to help our temperatures warm into the upper 60s later today. Now, tomorrow's going to be even warmer in the mid 70s. But then a cold front comes through later in the day. It's going to bring us a chance of showers and thunderstorms, but it's also going to bring those temperatures back down closer to average. We're going to be back into the 60s Wednesday through Friday. But then that warm up again, just in time for the weekend, highs will be in the low 70s. So as we head through the day, we're going to see that chance of a few rain showers, 61 degrees for your high in Eau Claire this afternoon, 61 in Augusta, low 60s in Durand. We're going to be in the upper 60s to near 70 in La Crosse, 67 in Winona and in Sparta, 64 in Whitehall this afternoon, right around 71 in Wakan, 72 in Lynxville, West Speed, Viroqua. You're going to top out in the upper 60s this afternoon. So Sky Tracker shows those mostly cloudy skies, stick around. The winds remain strong out of the south southeast. Tonight we could see an isolated rain shower, but most of us remain dry. Kind of a mix of clouds and sun tomorrow. Then come late afternoon and evening hours, that cold front brings a chance of showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms, and then that cool down behind it. Now your allergy alert. Oak symptoms low today and tomorrow, while birch and general tree symptoms, they're high today and for your Tuesday. So for the rest of today, warmer, breezy, could see a few isolated showers, 69 degrees for our high. Tonight, slight chance of a shower, mostly cloudy and mild, 58 for the overnight low. We're going to see highs in the mid 70s tomorrow with a chance of showers and storms late in the day. A few showers still lingering Wednesday and temperatures more seasonable in the 60s. A little cooler on Thursday, 60 degrees. Friday's looking very nice, right where we should be mid 60s. Sunshine, then we warm up into the low 70s heading into the weekend and early next week. That warm up does come with a slight chance of rain both Saturday and Sunday. So once again, kind of a roller coaster of temperatures, but even though we're not seeing a lot of sun today, at least it's going to warm up a little bit more than we saw this weekend highs today in the mid to upper 60s and no snow flurries in there either. I'm thankful yes. for that. Thanks, yes. Michelle. Well, the Oscars are the movie industry's biggest night and we're going to have a recap of this year's winners when we return. Thank you for watching News 8 Now, our community, your station. Nomadland was the big winner at last night's Academy Awards. The ceremony was scaled down this year because of the pandemic. There were no musical numbers and a DJ replaced the orchestra. Danya Backus has the latest from Los Angeles, including all of the historic firsts. This year, Hollywood's biggest night was like no other. We give this one to our wolf. Oh! Nomadland scooped up the Oscar for Best Picture. Frances McDormand also won Best Actress for her role in the movie, and filmmaker Chloe Zhao became the first woman of color and only the second woman to win Best Director. If this win means more, more people get to live their dreams, um, I'm extremely grateful. At 83, Anthony Hopkins is now the oldest acting winner ever, taking home the Oscar for Best Actor. In a switch, that category, not Best Picture, was the final award of the night. Many expected it to go to the late Chadwick Boseman for his performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Hopkins wasn't there to accept the award, but later posted on Instagram. Very grateful to the Academy and thank you. And I want to pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who's taken from us far too early. And the Oscar goes to Jo Jung Yoon. Ju Jung Yoon also made history as the first Korean to win Best Supporting Actress for her role in Minari. Thank you, God. Daniel Kaluuya won Best Supporting Actor for Judas and the Black Messiah. Filmmaker Tyler Perry, 
who was honored for his humanitarian efforts, urged Americans to reject hate and meet in the middle. That's where healing happens. That's where conversation happens. That's where change happens. And perhaps the most talked about moment of the night, after failing to win an Academy Award for the eighth time, Glenn Close showing she knows how to do the butt. Danya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Okay, well the DJ who provided music says he was instructed not to cut short acceptance speeches, which took up almost 43 minutes of the show. What a night. Stay with us, Michelle will join us one more time with your back to work forecast. Plenty of clouds this afternoon, warmer and breezy. Temperatures today will top out in the mid to upper 60s. Can't completely rule out an isolated rain shower or sprinkle as we head through the afternoon into the evening. Tomorrow's going to be even warmer with temperatures in the low to mid 70s, but then a cold front brings us a chance of rain late in the day and a cool down back into the 60s for the rest of the week, warming back into the 70s for the weekend. All right, thank you, Michelle, and thank you for joining us. You can get the latest weather and news updates at news8000.com. We'll see you back here at 5. Five.